Thank you so much for joining us at our Catalyst service. Uh, we have a special service planned for you tonight. We have a couple songs um, done by some of the members of our worship team, and then our children's pastor, Pastor Cheryl Ross, is bringing the message tonight. So let me give you a couple of tips how to make a home worship experience uh, really work for you. First, if you can cast this to a larger uh, TV screen than your phone or your laptop, that's gonna make for a great experience. And once you've done that, turn the volume up. And then as we sing and as we do the different elements of the service, make sure you participate. So stand to your feet and actually sing when it's the worship time. When it's prayer time, actually um, gather your family together and pray. And when it's the sermon time, take notes, lean in and fully engage. And that will help make this home worship experience really uh, the best for you to get the most out of it and really experience God's presence at this time. Let me pray for you and then we're gonna get going with our service. Father, thank you so much for this amazing opportunity we have in the middle of our week, right from our homes, wherever we're at, to just come to sing to you, to learn more about you, and to feel your presence. I pray, that God, that we would feel your presence right in our homes like never before. And I pray that because we showed up for church um, in the middle of our week, and we made time to, to watch this service, that we might never be the same. In Jesus' name.
the Catalyst. My name is Cheryl Ross. I'm the children's pastor here, and we're so glad that you decided to join us online tonight for our service. Whether you're watching on Church Online or Facebook or YouTube later on, we are just glad that you're here joining in with us. We know that this is a difficult time. This year has come in just crazy. None of us really expected this year to be what it has been so far. And for us, for my family personally, 2020 really came in like a whirlwind. On January 2nd, our son, Carter, he's four, he had his first ever seizure. And it was something that was out of nowhere. We never expected it. We were getting dinner ready, and it happened. And so we end up at the ER, and um, I just remember thinking through all of this, like, what is going on? What do we do? Like, what, what is this? And um, at the ER, we, we go in and we have all kinds of tests done. There's x-rays that need to be done and scans that need to be done. And as I was, I'm pregnant, I was not able to go into those rooms for those scans. And that was very difficult for me. So I'm standing in the hallway. My husband is in there for the scan. And I'm sitting there a mess absolute mess because I can hear my son inside the room for the CT scan crying and screaming out for help. He is screaming for him to get, for my husband, his dad, to get him out, to save him. And I can hear all this. And as hard as it was for me in the hallway, I know my husband had to be a mess too because my husband is in there and he knows that this is not going to hurt him. He knows that this is necessary, and all he can do through our son screaming is to try to reassure him that it's okay and that this was necessary and that he was right there with him. So at a certain point, I'm like, okay, I cannot be this mess when they come back out. So there's a bathroom close by, and I go in to try to compose myself. And I remember looking in the mirror and just beginning to pray, and I was like, God, what do we do? What are we going to do? What is going on? It was one of the scariest times in my life so far um, because there were lots of unknowns, a lot of unseens, and a lot of questions that we had that we just didn't understand. And what I felt God speak into me in that time was that even though the tests were hard and difficult and even traumatic for our son, they were necessary. Those things were going to show us what was unseen, it was going to make the unseen seen, and it was going to reveal answers for us and give us direction. Everything came back normal, came back fine. It was ruled that it was a febrile seizure, which is something we had never heard until that night, but they explained it all to us, that it was brought on by a high fever and some kind of virus. He was negative for flu, strep, all of that, just some typical virus that he could get. And it was something that was told to us that it could happen again up until age five. After age five, you know, it might be called something else and we would do more testings. But for the time being, we didn't need to worry a whole lot. However, what I learned through that experience and what I'm learning through the experience that we're facing now is that we often have to face things and we face circumstances and situations that are outside of our control, that are difficult, that we might not understand, that we might not get, but we need to take the time to call out to God. And we should know that God is already ahead of us. He's already there working on your behalf. And what is seen or unseen and unknown to us is seen and known to him. And so just like our son had to endure those tests in order to reveal answers to us. Sometimes we have to go through difficult things and endure some hard times in order for things to be revealed to us because it often takes those times for us to be vulnerable enough or still enough or reliant enough on God in order to call out to him and be ready and prepared for what he wants to speak to us. And just like for our son, what my husband as a father could do for him was sit there and assure him that he was okay and that he was safe and that he was right there with him. That's sometimes what we get from our God. That's what God can do for us in those times too, is that he is there and he tells us, I'm here with you. 
and he assures us that we're going to be okay. But Jeremiah 33 says, 3 says this. It says, call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. See, so often in our life, we get so focused on what's going on around us, on the things outside of our control, that we forget to look past it a little bit, and we fail to see what God is actually doing. We can have assurance that God is there when we call out to him, that he will hear us, that he sees us, that he will often, in those times when we do that, will reveal to us things that will astound us. He will answer us in ways that blows our mind. And sometimes that happens later. But I find this to be true and to be revealed in a story about Elisha. Elisha was a prophet. He was not Elijah. He came after Elijah. He was his successor. And a prophet is really just a messenger from God. God would use prophets in the Old Testament to speak, kind of be a mouthpiece for him, and speak to the people of Israel in order to bring their hearts back to him, turn them back to God from the ways that they had gone off. And so in 2 Kings chapter 6, starting in verse 8, we enter to this part of the story where we see that God is revealing information to Elisha about the enemy's plan of attack. And God, he was able to see what the enemy was doing. He knew what their steps were ahead of time. And he revealed that to Elisha time and time again so that he could protect his people, so that his people would be safe from harm. And it happens so often that the king of Aram begins to get really mad, and he believes that there's a traitor or a spy amongst them. And he asks his officers, he's like, who is revealing this information to our enemy? Who is doing this? But one of his officers knows about Elisha the prophet, and he begins to tell him about him. And in verse 12, he says that Elisha tells the king of Israel the very words that you speak in your bedroom. So the king of Aram, he's like, this is crazy. We need to go find out where this man is so we can capture him. So he quits spoiling our plans. So in verse 14, we pick up and it says, then he, he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out the, early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. So he finds out where he is. He sends chariots and horses and, a, and an army by night to surround them. And the servant wakes up, and this is the first thing he sees when he goes out, is this huge group of horses and chariots surrounding them. So let's think about this. In our current situation, we probably feel this way a lot, especially when we wake up. We are surrounded by what's going on with COVID-19. It floods our news feeds. We have fears that we face every single day and struggles that we deal with every single day. We fear getting the virus or a loved one getting the virus. We have struggles with finances possibly and bills piling up around us and not knowing how to take care of that. We have our kids' work, we have our work, we have housework, we have all these things that are going on that are our responsibilities day in and day out. And we might think, oh no, Lord, what shall we do? How are we going to get through this? How will we pay this? How do I manage all of these responsibilities? What am I supposed to really do with all of this that I am being faced with? And here was Elisha's response and what we can learn from. In verse 16, he says, don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. See, Elisha, he says, don't fear. He isn't afraid. He has come to know and realize that even in situations outside of our control, God is still there and we need not fear. God is still moving amongst us and he is still making moves on our behalf. He knows this, that we can read in 1 John 4, 4, it says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you 
is greater than the one who is in the world. Another translation says that victory is yours, and victory is yours today. You have something inside of you that is greater than anything that you face, anything that we deal with. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have God, his spirit living inside of you. And it's the same spirit, the same power that rose Christ from the dead that we just learned about on Sunday. It's that same power that is inside of you that you have access to. And so we should be able to face anything knowing, one, it's not a surprise to God, and also that he sees us, he hears us, he already knows. But Elisha, he didn't stop there because sometimes words aren't enough. We can tell people things, but sometimes we have to do something else. And so Elisha knew he needed to access that power that was in him. And in verse 17, it says this, and Elisha prayed. He prayed. He prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked out and saw the hills of full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. He knew that this servant needed to see for himself. He prayed that he would see and see for himself what Elisha was already tuned into. Elisha already knew God was there. And he knew that prayer, it often helps change our perspective. And it allows us to perceive things that were hidden to us before. So the servant, he was panicked. He was frightened. But the servant was only focused on the problem. Now Elisha, he was calm but he was focused on the solution. He was focused on God and what he knew to be true. These are two very different perspectives that we see within them because there is always more going on around us than what we can typically see or understand. In our situations and, and what people are dealing with, there's usually more to the story. And prayer, it is a key that can unlock what we don't see and what we don't understand. When we take time to stop and pray, it shifts our perspective from the problems and the things that are going on around us, and all of our struggles, all of our questions, and it connects us to God, who is above all those things, who knows things that are are past it and beyond it, who sees every single thing and is still there, who goes before us and who is above it all. It draws us into this conversation with God. And a conversation is two ways. And it allows us time where we are in his presence, where we can actually have the possibility to hear what it is that he wants to reveal to us. See, conversations with people are the same way. I use this this type of approach when I have kids or even adults in my life at times where they're acting in a way that I don't fully understand or comprehend. And I think this is not normal behavior. And I think there must be something that I'm not seeing that I don't understand. And I use this and I've had um, a couple years ago at camp, I had a counselor come to me and there were a couple of boys that we were responsible for that were not from our church, but they were causing a lot of trouble. And I said, you know, why don't you take time to get to know them because there's probably more to their story that's causing them to act out in this way. And he did that and he comes back to me and he said, I can't believe it. They are dealing with so much in their life right now. And after that, the kids changed. They were on better behavior the rest of the time. And it wasn't because he had tried to discipline them or do anything crazy, but he just took time to have a conversation with them and get to know what, what, what was going on in their life. And this is the same thing that we can do in our lives with God. We take time to call out to him and say, God, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with. And God can take that and say, but this is what I'm doing. I am here and I am moving. Prayer allows this to happen. It refocuses us on the one who is greater and brings us into his presence. So when you wake up and you find yourself 
just in the overwhelming presence of the day and all the tasks and all the things that lie ahead of you takes time to stop and get in the presence of God before your feet ever hit the ground. Prayer changes your perspective. This doesn't mean that our problems go away. The enemy, they were not tuned into or looped into what Elisha and his servants saw and knew. They didn't turn and flee. They were still there. And Elisha, again, accesses that prayer and power of God to deal with them. And you can read the rest of that story on your own. But here's the deal is that God's presence is greater in us than anything that we face. Prayer reminds us, at least, of God's overwhelming presence and his power. And that presence and that power lives in us. And it's readily available every moment of every single day. So let's access it, all right? Let's remember to do that. Let's remember to call out to God and rely on him in every single situation, circumstance, problem, test, or trial that we may face. Let's not allow fear from keep, to keep us from seeing what God is actually doing. He's always moving, always working, even though we don't always know, see, or understand. But we should rest in the knowledge that he does. And sometimes that's got to be enough for us. Sometimes we just have to accept and realize that he is there, and that should be enough assurance for us. Sometimes answers are not going to be revealed to us for a long time to come. It might be years down the road that we're able to look back and see and realize what God was doing in our lives at a certain time. We personally may never know if Carter's going to have a seizure or not, another seizure or not. We don't know if they will stop at age five. We don't know if there's anything else that might happen. We don't know how long the stay-at-home orders are going to last. We don't know how long it's going to be till work will be back to normal. We um, don't know, some of us don't know, if we're going to have an employer that's there readily waiting for them when they come back out of all this. We don't know if we're going to have the same job or the same things after this. We don't know when it is that we're going to be able to get together with family and friends and embrace them. I don't know for sure what my delivery of my baby is going to fully look like this year, this time around. We might not see a solution or a vaccine for this virus for quite some time. And we may have a hard time understanding it all. But when we pray, we can change our perspective. We can remember that God does know, that he does see. And we can see God is moving in the hearts of people and in their homes. We see families who are at home doing communion and foot washing and praying over people in this time. We see families spending time together like they never have before and they're not rushing around everywhere trying to get to everything and all the, all the stress that comes with that. We see businesses and other people blessing people who are on the front lines. We saw people give like they haven't gave during this in order for us as a church to be able to do that same very thing this past week. I've seen neighbors reaching out to elderly and one another in ways that I haven't seen before. And I've had conversations with people who have had major awakening moments during this time, who have never gone to church before, who are now committed to going when this is done, and they're going online right now during all of this. Imagine what this is going to be like when this is all over. Imagine how radically changed people will be when they're awakened to that same knowledge and understanding that they need that same connection with God that we have. In a time when we feel so disconnected from one another, we always have connection with God. And we need to shift our perspective to that. We need to call out to God and ask him, what shall we do? But don't do it out of fear. Do it expecting God to reveal you to you great and unsearchable things. Remember that he is greater than anything you face. Prayer changes perspective. So let's pray. 
Dear God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the ability to be able to pray and connect with you and be able to access the power that you have placed inside of us, the power that you sent your son to die on the cross so that way we could have your presence with us always, Father God. We thank you for that, and we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would come and fill us with your presence and your hope and the knowledge and understanding of knowing that you are always with us, you are always there, and you always see, you always understand, and that when we just take time to get into your presence and call out to you, that those things could be revealed to us, that those things can help shift our perspective onto you, the one who is greater than it all. And I, I pray, God, that we would just remember that, that we would do that day in and day out, and that as a result of that kind of living and the kind of renewed prayer life that we could have through this and through our struggles, that we will have a greater understanding that these things are necessary in order to reveal to us things that would otherwise possibly be unseen. And I pray, God, that you would just make a great move among the people of our community and our state and our nation and our world through this time, that many people would come to know you and love you as a result of being in a place where they need to be connected to something greater and that one that is greater is you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. No point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath And planets form if the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Heavy burning stars, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise You don't speak in vain No syllable empty or void For once you have spoken All nature and signs Follow the sound of your voice yeah. And as you speak a hundred billion creatures catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I I can see your heart in everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. So will I 
tuning in this evening. This is the point of our service where we would normally be receiving our offering. And since we're digital, there's some digital ways that you can still give your offerings to Southridge Church. First, if you're at church online, you can click the giving tab. It'll take you out to a giving platform uh, right where you're at. The other way that you can give is just by going on a web browser to src.live slash giving and you can give there. If you've been faithfully giving through all of this um, hectic and crazy time, I just want to thank you. You've helped us continue to do ministry. Here we're reaching more people digitally than we ever could in person. We've also been able to feed um, hospital staffs and first responders. We're also going to be able to feed those that are hungry in our community as well because of your faithful generosity. So your giving matters now possibly more than ever. And I just want to say thank you for continuing to give. Hey, we've got a great event coming up next Saturday, April 25th. It's a drive through prayer experience. From 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., you can drive up to our parking lot. And we'll have staff members stationed throughout um, a design path on our parking lot that you can drive through and have a prayer experience with your family right there in your car. We'll be praying for different things going on in our world, as well as have a place where you can request prayer digitally. Everything will be done socially distanced. We won't come in contact with each other, but it's a great way to at least see each other's face and get to do some good in our community by praying for the needs of those around us. So once again, that's April 25th, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And there will be more information available at our weekend services about that. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I pray that the rest of your week is blessed. We'll see you later.